This is Gregory Majewski of Oakdale, Connecticut. You're listening to International Radio Report on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Hi, everyone. Welcome to our Easter edition of the International Radio Report, Sunday, March the 31st, 2024. My name's Sheldon. Jill is co-host, as usual. And uh, we hope you are enjoying your long weekend if you celebrate the Easter holiday. Uh, we thank you for uh, taking time out of it to listen to our 30 minutes of news and information from the world of radio. We uh, want to begin today, of course, by updating you on the CKUT funding drive, which has wrapped up as of this past week. And uh, we have some some numbers for you and some thank yous to, to put out to everyone. Yep, we have that uh, little update for the Funding Drive 2024 uh, from the uh, Funding Drive Coordinator, Madeline Lines, and uh, it starts by, thank you for 50000 We did it. Thank you for 50 k We hit our Funding Drive goal in the last seconds of the drive last Sunday night, meeting our goal of $50,000 with time to spare for the first time in years. Our community really pulled through this year. And at the time where the station really needs it, the funds raised will go towards the cost of our core uh, operation that have become unmanageable as our main streams of income, like advertising and student fees, plummet or stay stagnant. The future of CKUT has been in limbo, and with your donations, we're buying some time to balance the budget and steer the station to a sustainable future. It's never too late to donate. We could still use all the help we can get at ckut.ca slash donate. And to everyone who donated, CKUT loves you. And we'd personally like to thank uh, our International Radio Report listeners who generously donated to the funding drive to the to- tune of $1,535. So our thanks go out to the following people. Uh, Richard Austin, Frederick uh, Beige, Robert Bell, Eric Cottrell, Brent Daglish, McDelmage, Mark Harper, Ron Hunsicker, Sarah Mangle, Norman Martel, John McCollman, Gilles Michaud, Ian Millet, Brian Penny, Antoine Simard, Paul Steckler, Mario Torino, Robert Tupage, Dennis Wenger, John Fisher, and Ron Cesarek. And uh, there may be a few others coming in the works that uh, haven't been processed through yet, but uh, you know who you are. And we thank you all for your generous, generous donations. It's uh, really helped. And I think we're quite proud of our show and our listeners for generating, uh, you know, a nice big chunk of money towards the $50,000 uh, considering we only do two half-hour shows uh, during the funding drive. So I think it was uh, really, really uh, generous of everyone. So uh, thanks again to everybody. Yeah, thank you all. $1,535 for a 30-minute show is just amazing, and it's thanks to all of you. We have some a couple local stories. Uh, one is a, is a real sad note, and um, it is an obituary for Joseph, better known as Sonny Joe Cross. And this was uh, from an obituary in the Montreal Gazette. Born April the 23rd, 1929, Sonny Joe passed away on March the 20th, 2024, at the Anna LaBerge Hospital, surrounded by his family. The family patriarch, radio DJ, community elder, volunteer, activist, and residential school survivor. He was a devoted family man and a strong role model and inspiration. His love of music led to the creation of his radio show, featuring classic country and big band music at Ganawage's K103.7 in uh, 1990, where he volunteered for 33 years. His show was his pride and joy and helped him forge lasting friendships. Sonny Joe tried his best to bring joy to the community while fundraising for various organizations in and outside of Ganawage. He was devoted to helping people, and this is how he would like to be remembered. He leaves behind his wife of 73 years, Gladys Thomas, his daughters, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and even great-great-grandchildren, his sisters, and many beloved.
beloved nieces and nephews. As per his wishes, there will be no funeral service, but donations in his name can be made to the uh, Gani Waronon Mohawk Immersion Ganawage, the Language Nest, or the Ganawage Fire Brigade. So uh, I had the chance to know him and uh, did a little bit of work with him at the station uh, in the past. And uh, he was really an institution at the radio station. Everybody loved the show and uh, was really sad to see that notice uh, this past week of his passing. Next, we have CHSV, Light 106.7, that drops Ted Bird. This is via Steve Faggy of the Fagstein blog. People who tuned in to 106.7 in Hudson Saint Lazare on March the 23rd to listen to the Terry and Ted show were disappointed and possibly confused that the show wasn't on today. Ted Bird confirmed that he is no longer employed by the station and said it was the decision of owner Evanov Communications. The weekday morning show is listed on the station's website without a host, and the Saturday morning Terry and Ted show has also been removed from the schedule. Terry DeMonte also confirmed on social media that show is not returning. The news of Bird's departure is a bit surprising as it was only in January that Evanov began carrying Bird's show on its Ottawa station at 98.5. Bird joined CHSVFM, then the Jewel 106.7, when it launched in 2015 as the first English language radio station serving the western off island region. That ended five years of bouncing around local radio stations after Bird left Shum FM and a dispute with management. He worked at K103.7 CKRK in Kanawake, CKGM TSN 690 AM, and CKKI Kick Country 89.9 before landing at the Unsit station. The Terry and Ted podcast, Standing By, is a separate venture and will go on. Bird says they're recording Season 7 in April. As for a new job, there are always options out there, but I think I'm done with radio, said Bird. Certainly a familiar name in Montreal radio, and I don't know. We don't know if we'll be hearing him on the radio again, uh, but the podcast, as it says, will continue uh, with Terry DeMonte. Our next story is uh, from the Association for International Broadcasting's newsletter, It is the USAGM budget request rises to meet growing global challenges. The U.S. president has released his fiscal year 2025 budget request, outlining $950 million for the U.S. Agency for Global Media to advance its mission to inform, engage, and connect people around the world in support of freedom and democracy. The budget request marks a 7.4% increase over fiscal year 2023 and outlines new investments and initiatives to support two federal networks, Voice of America and the Office of Cuba Broadcasting, five non-federal entities, Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty, Radio Free Asia, the Middle East Broadcasting Network, Open Technology Fund, and a newly created non-federal entity, which will incubate, test, and propagate new operating strategies to improve the agency's service delivery, including a forthcoming global news service to launch in Mandarin, English, and eventually more languages. Meanwhile, Russia's Sputnik radio service says it it has grown the reach of its terrestrial radio service, RSFM, in Turkey, claiming 60 million listeners. That's presumably coverage rather than a measured audience. It has grown the number of transmitters to cover 24 provinces in Turkey across all seven of the country's regions. Sputnik is sanctioned in the European Union, though. So this is interesting. Uh, I think it just shows us the need for uh, radio and broadcasting in certain areas of the world. We were talking just before the show about the, uh, they were kind of uh, asking for uh, possibly adding new transmitters in Kuwait. That's right. So I think there's a need. I think this just shows the uh, tremendous need for radio and broadcasting uh, for many parts of the world that, you know, don't have necessarily the best news sources. So the BBC relaunches global apps. This is via Association for International Broadcasting Newsletter. BBC Studios, the commercial arm of the BBC, and BBC News has announced the global launch of the all-new BBC.com and BBC app 
transforming the way digital audiences read, watch, and find the BBC's renowned journalism and storytelling outside of the UK. Available to users worldwide, the new website and app boast an updated design and navigation along with more of the trusted, impartial journalism that consumers rely on, the BBC across the world. The new BBC.com and BBC app also allow for a more premium and sustainable commercial offering with ad tech enhancements that unlock new opportunities for advertisers. The BBC app, which replaces the international BBC News app, brings together content from across the BBC for the first time ever. The app mirrors the refreshed BBC.com experience, offering stories and videos across business, innovation, culture, travel, earth, and more alongside news, sports, and live coverage. The BBC app is available for download today in the App Store for Apple users and for Android devices on the Google Play Store. Tara Maitra, Chief Commercial Officer, BBC Global Media and Streaming, BBC Studios, said, We are excited to bring the new website and new and brand new BBC app to audiences and partners around the globe following a successful first introduction to consumers in North America. These new digital products deliver an experience as premium as our news and storytelling and offers us the opportunity for future growth as we remain focused on finding new and innovative ways to make BBC content more easily accessible across the globe. BBC.com, which relaunched in North America last December, and the BBC app allow users to engage with the BBC's content in a more cohesive experience. Uh, some of the, the changes to the website and app include a new homepage. The new BBC.com homepage and home screen now include a mix of the biggest global news stories of the moment, plus a selection of timely and relevant features curated by BBC editors. A new look but the same trusted news. Visitors looking to dig deeper into what's happening around the globe can navigate to news and to find articles, videos, and live coverage. Those looking for news from Africa, Asia, Australia, Europe, Latin America, and Middle East can find it in the World section under News. New sections. BBC Arts and Entertainment Coverage in Culture, Technology, Health, and Science in Innovation and Sustainability and Environment in Earth Sport, business, and travel continue to offer agenda-setting stories from around the world, as well as the thought-provoking features readers have come to love from the BBC. There's also more BBC videos. New video section offers an extended library of BBC videos and multimedia storytelling, featuring content ranging from news and sport updates to captivating stories on climate, sustainability, science, health, entertainment, and history. There's more live coverage. New live section makes it easier to find live news updates and live global sport coverage as they unfold. There's the up-to-the-minute breaking news alerts. Audiences can sign up to receive the same breaking news notifications they always have. And finally, the BBC Direct to your inbox. Discover our newsletters, including the news briefings, U.S. election unspun, tech decoded, future earth, the essential list, and the brand new in history. So this is uh, interesting. I think they're focusing, of course, a lot on the digital platforms. Unfortunately, we hear of a lot of cuts on other platforms like, you know, shortwave. Uh, and we'll have more news about that coming up. You know, at least they're trying to make it as easy as possible. I used a lot of the uh, old app. I found the old app was kind of a little jam-packed with too much information and the way that it was built. Uh, hopefully, this is going to be much better and clearer to navigate through. Yeah, I think they're really steering people to that to that route. As you said, they know that uh, you know they've lost a lot of their other services because of budget cuts and what have you. So uh, they're hoping that they can fill some of the gaps with this. Some of this material, I'm sure, though, will make it on to the, ex the remaining BBC shortwave broadcast that s some of us do here around the world in different parts of the world. So uh, this will be sort of a supplement to it as well. So that's good to see. So what's happening with our son? Well, our son was uh, quite active. It had quite a few flares, including, as we are recording, an X flare that happened today. We had a huge flare last week, 
and it sparked one of the biggest geomagnetic storms that we had since uh, 2017. So uh, it was uh, quite interesting. I was looking at the sky in case I'd see auroras, but the shortwave bands were affected a lot. You could see that a lot of stations were fluttery and very weak. Um, so what's coming up? There's still the possibility of flaring from AR3615, which is the same spot that has been flaring all week. Um, sunspot number 101, the solar flux 173 after briefly reaching above 200 for a couple of days this week. These spots are moving off slowly from the uh, surface uh, as the sun rotates. So we might actually end up getting more quiet conditions as the week uh, advances. Don't forget that today is the A24 schedule season that is starting. So that means that you might be lost in your international broadcast stations. If you look at your favorite uh, websites like EIBI Space or uh, short-wave.info and you see something uh, on the frequency you're listening to, it might not be correct. So it's important to know that as we are moving into the summer schedules, there is uh, a adjustment. It'll take maybe you know, a week or two before everybody gets their schedules right. But you can also go to the hfcc.org website. They have public data files for A24. They're a little complicated to go through, but at least it's better than having absolutely nothing. So uh, A24 is in effect. If you don't find your favorite broadcast on your favorite frequency, it might just be because they moved to a new frequency for the summer schedules in North America and the Northern Hemisphere. So uh, that's what the reason why you might not hear your favorite station at the time and frequency you usually do. So to witness all of that, of course, you need to turn on a radio and listen. This is Jeff Eichner of Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, United States of America. Listen to the International Radio Report every Sunday morning at 1030 on CKUT 90.3 FM in Montreal. Uh, just to add a little to that solar report, um, the effect that it had on medium wave was quite uh, remarkable. I was able to hear a medium wave station from Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic on 750 kilohertz. It was mixing with the Atlanta station and also on 870, the uh, radio relo signal from uh, from Cuba um, was in there. You could hear their ticking clock and that was in behind the station from uh, New Orleans. And there were Spanish uh, background on a lot of the clear channel station so when those conditions happen it's a good a good time to check the medium wave band uh, i know a lot of people were reporting uh, central and south american stations coming through so there you have it always uh, always something to check like jill says yep. got to turn the radio on our second story about the BBC is uh, a reduction in service, unfortunately. Uh, this comes from James Careless for Radio World magazine. BBC Radio 4 is dropping their AM or medium wave signal in April. It's not an April Fool's Day prank. Effective the 15th of April, Radio 4 will no longer be available on medium wave. Medium wave listeners will need to retune their radio to alternative pro platforms. With these two Two terse sentences at the bottom of a related announcement, the BBC signaled the end of BBC Radio 4's service on medium wave. The service will still be available on FM, DAB, digital TV and online. The frequencies were only being used to support its long wave service, which has been scheduled for closing this month since May of last year. Quote, medium wave transmission on Radio 4 is ending as there will no longer be a long wave variant of Radio 4's schedule, said BBC spokesperson Laura Zetterberg in an email to Radio World. There's no Radio 4 service on medium wave. It has always been there to support long wave. There are only nine transmitters in total providing very little coverage and affected listeners will have access to Radio 4 on FM even if they don't have a digital radio. So it's cutting one service, one uh, access one access to their signal of Radio 4, but moving it to other platforms instead. As long as people are within coverage range of them, 
then fine. Or if they have access, access to the digital services or online services, yes. But medium wave, not any longer. There will be a, a need at some point to level off and keep at least a minimum because um, we keep saying not everyone is capable of going to these digital platforms. So uh, hopefully, um, you know, we can have at least a minimum of radio available, which is, you know, free and much easier for a lot of people to get their news and programming. So we have in our next story the Association for International Broadcasters, AIB, and many major news organizations express solidarity with Gaza journalists. So this is via the AIB newsletter. Dozen of news organization leaders from across the world, including the Association for International Broadcasting, Associated Press, Agence France Presse, Reuters, the CEO of BBC News, the chairman and CEO of CNN, and the presidents of CBS, NBC, and ABC News have joined an open letter affirming their solidarity with journalists reporting in Gaza. The letter, coordinated by the Committee to Protect Journalists, the CPJ, with the support of the World Association of News Publishers, demonstrates strong and unified support for colleagues reporting from Gaza in the deadliest conflict for journalists ever, documented by CPJ. For nearly five months, journalists and media workers in Gaza, overwhelmingly the sole source of the underground reporting from within Palestinian territory, have been working in unprecedented conditions, the letter, the letter reads. These journalists, on whom the international news media and the international community rely for information about the situation inside Gaza, continue to report despite grave personal risks. A total of at least 94 journalists have been killed in the Israel-Gaza war. The majority of them, 89, were Palestinians killed by the Israeli military. The signatories include outlets from Estonia, France, Germany, Ireland, Israel, <coughs> India, Japan, Jordan, Kenya, Lebanon, Mexico, Pakistan, the Philippines, Qatar, South Africa, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Additional signatories are welcome, and they uh, say to contact letter at cpj.org to add your news organization, including name of signatory, title, and name of organization. So the letter reads as follows. We, the undersigned, stand united with Palestinian journalists in their call for safety, protection, and the freedom to report. For nearly five months, journalists and media workers in Gaza, overwhelmingly the sole source of on-the-ground reporting from within the Palestinian territory, have been working in unprecedented conditions. At least 89 have been killed in the war, according to the Committee to Protect Journalists. More journalists than have ever been killed in a single country over an entire year. These journalists, on whom the international news media and the international community rely for information about the situation inside Gaza, continue to report despite grave personal risks. They continue despite the loss of family, friends, and colleagues, the destruction of homes and offices, constant displacement, communications blackouts, and shortages of food and fuel. Journalists are civilians, and Israeli authorities must protect journalists as non-combatants according to international law. Those responsible for any violations of that long-standing protection should be held accountable. Attacks on the journalists are also attack on truth. We commit to championing the safety of journalists in Gaza, which is fundamental for the protection of press freedom everywhere. So this is very important, seeing all of these organizations getting together and saying, look, you got to protect these people. That's the way we get our news. You know, we're out here far, far from what's happening there in North America. But we know what's happening there thanks to these people that takes immense risks to report back on what's happening. I was a little bit disappointed as a Canadian to not see uh, Canadian Broadcasting supporting this letter. 
Um, I believe the National Post and maybe the Globe and Mail, I think their names may have been on the list. But other than that, um, I was a little bit disappointed that uh, we didn't see any other Canadian uh, support on a letter like this. Especially considering, uh, considering all the countries that you read off. I mean, it's a, it's a who's who out there. To not see us there was a bit of a disappointment. Yeah, considering also the, um, the news networks from the United States, the big guns like the ABC, NBC, and so on. Yeah, it exactly. Yes. Our final story uh, comes from a place we don't hear about too much in the news. Uh, fortunately, you have a program like ours that does cover stories like this. Uh, also from the Association for International Broadcasting, the Sudan Army retakes the state broadcaster. On the 12th of March, the Sudanese Army announced that it had retaken the headquarters of Sudan Radio and TV Corporation in Omdurman after 11 months of fighting in the city. News reports screened by Sudan TV, which had relocated to Port Sudan after the loss of the Omdurman headquarters, showed extensive destruction in the complex. The TV and radio complex houses the National TV, Radio and Film Archive, perhaps the largest in Africa, that held material from the past 80 years. Much of the archive consists of film that needs to be kept in a controlled environment and over the past year apart from damage caused by the fighting the archive will have no air conditioning to protect the precious films and tapes al jazeera english reporter heba morgan gained access to the complex and saw the devastation including the archives and uh, she did produce a youtube video which we will post the link to so you can uh, take a look at it it's rather dramatic to see the damages that were done uh, in the uh, Uh, in the archives especially so uh, this is a, a a big hit on not just the Sudanese uh, broadcasting but recordings that they they had housed from many different parts of Africa over uh, as they say 80 years of uh, material yeah they're just sad because you know when you think about all the history hidden within these tapes and these uh, movies um, it, it's sad to lose any of it Uh, unfortunately. So we have upcoming ham radio contests. We'll start with the Penn Ohio DX Society, and uh, they are holding a PSK 31 Flavors Contest, 1000 April 6th of 0400 Zulu April 7th. The purpose is to work as many stations as possible using the six various PSK modes. The bands are 20 meters only, and you can work each station only once, and all contacts must be two-way. And you can use, for the modes, the various six PSK modes. There's the Louisiana QSO Party, 1400 Zulu April 6th to 0200 Zulu April 7th, organized by the Louisiana Contest Club. It's 160 through two meters, no work bands. It's phone, CW, and digital. And finally, the um, Polish Amateur Radio Union is holding the SPDX contest, 1500 April 6th to 1500 Zulu April 7th. The band's 160 through 10 meters. It's both CW and SSB. And we are out of time. Yeah, we'll quickly tell you how to uh, get in touch with us or Listen to the program at a convenient time for yourself. Our email is radioreport at yahoo.com. We live stream and are archived at ckut.ca. Our Facebook group, International Radio Report, 957 members. We encourage you to join. Our YouTube channel will have the latest show and previous shows for you. Look for our International Radio Report channel at IRR on YouTube. And our X account at IRR. CKUT. Thank you for tuning in. We will talk to you again next week and we'll have information on the upcoming solar eclipse on next week's show. Have a great week, everybody. Bye bye. Bye bye for now. <laughs> Radio Sweden International. Ni lyssnar.
lyssnar till Sveriges Radio utlandsprogrammet. Här kommer nu ett halvtimmesprogram på svenska.